This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson I thought we would take a look at the first part in a two-part tutorial series taking a look at 4K workflows inside of Media Composer. Now in this lesson we're actually going to be looking at working with larger than HD footage inside of an HD project. We're going to assume for argument's sake you're not finishing in 4K, you only want to finish in HD. We're actually going to take a lot of things sort of, you know, we're going to assume a lot of things in this lesson, but I'm going to get to those in just a second. Now in part two, we're going to take a look at the new workflow using our uh, DNX HR codec inside a Media Composer version 8.3 and how we're going to be able to start in 4K, work and edit in 4K, and then bring everything back in in high res to transcode it in DNX HR HQ. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And of course, we are going to need some footage to work with. So what we're going to do is simply navigate up to file. I don't need to open a bin and I'm going to come down to AMA link. I have some fantastic 4K footage courtesy of Artbeats. And you're going to see that inside of this bin right now, if I switch over to my raster dimension bin view, you'll see that I have some clips here that are 24 and some that are 25, and that's going to become relevant in just a second. We'll come back to that. Uh, but you'll see that we have clips of some different raster dimensions as well. Now these clips are all 4K. Now the current project that I have set up is a 1080p 24 project because we're just going to assume for again for argument's sake like I said in the intro we're going to have to assume a lot of things we're going to assume that I'm going to be finishing in 24p now if you happen to be you know finishing in 2398 you're going to want to make sure that you set your project up as a 2398 project because remember it's like I always say you know when you're setting up your project you're not setting it up for the type of media that you're going to be dropping into your timeline well you are in a manner of speaking but in most cases what you're setting your timeline up for is how you're going to be finishing your project because you might have you know 2398 footage 25 footage 30 you know 60 frame per second footage that you're all going to be combining into this one sequence but at the end of the day if you need a 2398 master that's the type of project that you're going to want to set up now in this case like i said i'm just going to assume them that, that i'm delivering in 24 uh, frames per second for my end product and that's the type of project that i've created you'll also see that this project right now is a uh, an hdtv 1080p project so 1920 by 1080 now if I wanted to get in and just transcode some of these clips, let's just say I was going to you know, do a transcode and we we're going to do all of our color correction and grading inside a symphony. Now again, like I said, making a lot of assumptions here, we're going to get a little bit more into uh, doing some cool color correction in the second part of this lesson. But like I said, we're just going to make some assumptions here and what I'm going to do, just because this is important for me to show you, is I'm going to pick one clip that's 24 frames per second and one clip that's 25 frames per second. Because this is one part of the step that I always see a lot of people run into. And if they don't do this correctly, they're going to get tripped up really, really quickly. Okay, two clips. We're going to navigate up to clip. I'm going to come down to consolidate transcode. And I'm right now I'm just going to skip over everything and just come right down and say transcode. Now the first thing that's going to happen is you'll see Media Composer immediately try to start transcoding. And then it's going to say, hold on a second. Some of the clips do not match the edit rate of the current project. Transcode creates new clips that match the current project rate, meaning 24p. Because the new edit rate does not match the original clip, you cannot batch capture, batch import, relink, or link via AMA to these new clips. Convert or skip clips that do not match the edit rate of the project. Now, if you're never going back to the 4K originals, you might not care. You might just transcode this footage, you know, smash it into being 24 frames per second and be fine with that. But because I'm going to show you how we can relink to this media at the end of the day after our HD project is done, what we would want to do is we'd want to import all of that, or pardon me, transcode all of that 25 frame per second footage in a 25 frame per second project, which luckily enough, 
I've already done. So what I'm going to do for right now is I'm simply going to say cancel. Now the other thing that's important to keep in mind and what I'm going to do is I'll just select one clip here. Uh, let's just select you know the 24 one. It doesn't really matter. We'll just select the 24 one here. Of course I can always right click and simply say consolidate transcode. You'll see inside of the consolidate transcode window that you're going to want to make sure that you have transcode selected. You'll want to make sure that you're going to the right drive. You notice over here under raster dimensions that I don't have any options because you know right now we don't have a proxy timeline because we are dealing with 1920 by 1080 so it's not like we're going to be working in 4K and dropping that quality down to be 2K or you know less than that. Of course our target video resolution as well is going to be the sort of standard HD uh, online and offline uh, codecs that you have access to here. You'll see, of course, much like we've seen in other transcode windows, we will be able to apply source transformations like color encoding and frame flex. Now, those are two topics that we're going to cover in their own dedicated tutorials. That's really too much for me to go into in this lesson here. Like I said, so watch out for those ones coming up soon. If you wanted to do things like convert the audio sample rate or the audio bit depth, you could do that here as well. But in most cases, you'd simply say transcode and you'd be all good to go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm actually just going to delete this bin in general here because I've already, like I said, transcoded some of these clips here. So let's just delete that and we'll just empty the trash. And like I said, I've got some clips here that were transcoded at 24 frames per second. Here we go. Very nice. I've gone in, I've already marked some in and out points for us to make a quick timeline. And I also have some clips here from a 25 frame per second project here. Let's just switch my bin view to be raster dimensions so you can see there's my 25 frames per second. There is my 24 frames per second, very nice. So let's just create this quick timeline here. Now I believe I should be able to just grab these clips and just drag and drop them in here, there we go. And I believe it should respect my in and out points, which it looks like it has, which very good. And what we're gonna do now is just take this 25 frame per second footage and we're just gonna drop it in here in the middle. Okay, just like this, drop that in there. Take another one here, very nice. We'll drop it in, ah, sure, we'll just drop it in there. And let's take the last one here, some lovely flowers, drop it in here, okay? Now again, like I said, in this lesson, we're just going to assume that any color correction you're going to be doing, you'll be doing in Symphony or maybe in Base Light, you know, or even in Resolve. So I'm not even going to worry about that. Now in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how while you're doing your editorial, you know, working in a 4K project, you can have a colorist working in Red Cine X Pro really getting in and tailoring those shots almost exactly the way that you're going to want them so that when you relink your footage, everything's going to look 10 times better than it did when you started. Okay, so now we've got a timeline here and let's just call this our offline. Actually, we'll just call it our online because, you know, for the purpose of what we're doing, we're just going to assume, and I'm just going to create a new bin that we'll call sequences here. We're just going to assume that, you know, Everything was great. You transcoded all your footage, everything you were happy with. You know, you can get in, you know, everything looks great. Now, what's important to also keep in mind here is that you'll see that these three clips, the 25 frame per second clips, are a different color. Now, you might have, like I said before, you might have 25 frame per second, 60 frame per second footage all in one timeline. So, how do you know what's what? Well, it's actually very easy to figure out. All you need to do is simply come down to the fast menu and come up to clip color. You'll see that if I bring the clip color down right here, that right here, my 25 frame per second color coded right here is the same color as the clip. So this is a quick way to get in and actually see what the different colors are. And of course I could switch that to be anything I wanted to. Let's just say I wanted to switch that to be, um, I don't know here, maybe I want to switch that to be sort of that color gray and I said okay and guess what? There we go, they're now all that color. But of course I think I'll switch that back here. We'll just get it to be at least something that's close here. Clip color, we'll just come in here and maybe we'll sort of make it, I think it was sort of a bluish color, that color right there. There we go, perfect. Okay, so this is our timeline. We're done with it, I'm happy with it. Let's just say, you know, hypothetically, we finished this in standard F, it was done, you know, that was weeks ago, project's been archived, and you know what, we're sitting here and we're saying, you know what, why don't we make a few adjustments? You know, maybe we're doing a commercial, maybe this is gonna be a tech rep version of the commercial. I wanna get in and I wanna utilize that 4K original footage to get in and do some, you know, things like, you know, frame flex. Maybe I only want to see, you know, sort of this part of the frame right here. I don't want to see the whole frame, you know, because the city's, you know, the sky's kind of boring. It's really sort of this fountain and whatever this goblet statue is that I want to focus in on. So, you know, we're going to make, like I said, an alternate version of this commercial. But to do that, we're going to need to relink to that original 4K footage. So how do we go about doing that? 
Well, let's just say for argument's sake here, I'm just going to close this here. I'll just close transcodes. I'm just going to close the 25 frame per second. And what we're also going to do is I'm just going to take everything offline because again, we're going to assume that all this you know audio was sent to audio post. So let's do that. What we're going to do is just come to the media tool here. And there we go. And let's just select our current project here. We actually need to select two projects, the 24 and 25, because I want to get rid of all of that media. We're just going to select everything here. I'll say OK. And let's just blow everything away. See you later. Goodbye. Don't need you. Delete. Everything's going to go offline. OK. So this is now what we have. We've got nothing. So let's now relink to that 4K media so we can get in, like I said, and do some frame flex work. OK. So you'll see that right now I only have the sequence because let's just say again, hypothetically, that you know all these clips were gone. Let's just get rid of them here. I'll get rid of the 25 ones as well. Because you know, you've always been in this situation where you've got nothing at your disposal except the sequence. So without decomposing the sequence, how do I see the clips that were originally associated with it? Well, it's actually very simple. All we need to do is come to the Fast menu. Let's come up to our Set Bin Display right here. And all I'm going to do is say, show me the reference clips. So what this is basically going to do is show me all the clips that are referenced in this timeline. So basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clips. I'm simply going to say OK. And there are the eight clips that are associated with this timeline. Now, what's also important to keep in mind is that if I match frame and I say Find Bin, you'll see that I actually have the entire original clip here, all 15 seconds of it, not just what I was using in the timeline, which is four seconds, which is very good. So what we need to do now is to simply select all the clips in the bin. Let's navigate up to clip and let's come down to relink. Now I'm going to show you where everybody gets tripped up in this whole process and they get ticked off and they say, oh, the relink window stinks. It hasn't worked, you know, since the inception of Media Composer. And I'm going to show you why it doesn't stink and why you're going to love it, especially working in, you know, sort of an, an offline or HD to 4K workflow. Inside the relink window, what you're going to do is you're going to leave your relink selected items to media on drive, all available drives. You're going to leave all this the same. What you're going to do is you're going to come down to your source name and you're going to want to make sure that instead of it being the tape name or the source file ID, it's the tape name or the source file name. Now, in most cases, people at this point say, oh, OK, I'm good to go. I'm simply going to say, OK, I'm going to sit back and there we go. Everything. Look at that. Nothing has come back. The only thing that's come back is my audio. Oh, this relink tool, it stinks. It doesn't work properly. Oh, it's terrible. No, it doesn't stink. It's actually working correctly. It's just that you're not working it correctly. So what exactly are you not working correctly? Well, let me show you. Let's come back. Let's just make sure my clips are selected. Let's come back to the relink window. Everything looks correct except for one tiny thing. Right down here under video parameters, you'll see that what you've told the relink window to do is to relink to the video format of the current project only, which means it's going to look for 1080p, 24 frame per second footage. Not what we want. We want it to relink to any video format. Once I select any video format and I say OK, what's going to happen is, is that all of this footage is going to get relinked to the original 4K material. Now, how do I know that this is the original 4K material? Well, if you take a look at the bin now, what used to be clips has now been switched to little AMA link to icons. And if I switch back now to my raster dimension, you'll see that we're now relinked to all of the original 4K content. And if I wanted to, what I could do is I could step into this clip right here. We can, of course, use the power of frame flex to zoom in really only on this part of the shot right here. There we go. I can now step out and this clip has now been adjusted so that we only see the fountain and of course this huge goblet type thing in the middle of the screen. Okay, so this like I said is going to be part one at our two part look at doing some actual 4K work inside of Media Composer. Like I said, in this first lesson, we were really sort of focusing on pre version 8, so we, or pre version 8.3 really, you know, before we had the ability to create larger than HD frame sizes. This lesson is really going to show you how you can get in. What's important to keep in mind as far as transcoding goes, remember, transcode similar frame rates inside of those type of projects and then simply open the bins into the project that you're working with with your master timeline because the last thing you want to do is take all of your you know 25 frame you know 60 frame footage and crunch it down to be 24 because then you can't do a relink 
like I just did in case you happen to need to go down that route. Okay, now coming up in our next lesson, we're gonna take a look at a 4K workflow. We're actually, believe it or not, gonna be talking about a 4K offline workflow to a 4K online workflow, and I'm gonna show you why a tool outside of Media Composer is really gonna come in handy using the technique I showed you with Relink so that you can create some very cool color correction looks outside of Media Composer and literally link to them with the click of a button. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.